some of the affected areas have been without power supply for close to 24 hours. Hundreds of persons living in the Wajagbari municipality were forced to spend the night outside their homes after water levels there rose to deadly height. Residents say the flooding was caused by the spillage of excess water from the Wager Dam. Security agencies worked throughout the night in the dark to rescue persons trapped in their homes as the affected communities have been without power for close to 24 hours. Um, we'll be teaming up with Maxwell Agbaba shortly to bring us uh, what the situation is in Wager. Uh, but just before we bring you to, uh, we we'll bring you details of that particular story. Let, let's do some some stories now, and then we'll we'll, we'll get you details of that story later on. Um, now, uh, Maxwell will be joining us from Wager, so we can bring you details of that particular happening there. Now, um, this is still news desk on the joint news. Uh, the footage you're seeing there is how the rescue processes were uh, yesterday, uh, how the authorities were rescuing. Uh, you know. Homes, walled and gated properties look deserted. The occupants have all fled to safety. Those who had the information late about the intensity of the flood are now trapped in their rooms as the water reaches the waist of persons who are even six feet tall. For these expert soldiers, personnel from the 48th Engineers Regiment, it was a battle as they tied a thick rope to the boat to drag it along. Who are the residents forced out of your home and this is the only place um, affected by this um, kind of situation. Um, earlier we were at Tejiku, Tejiku also, um, also flooded a lot of the people forced out of their homes. The National Disaster Management Organization is also on the ground in another area um, that is Tejiku also um, on another you know, uh, rescue mission. Uh, the part where we are experiencing, you know, a, 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 you know, the ferocity of uh, the water that has been gushing from um, the Greater Dam. Some of the residents, you know, um, tell me. Um, churches, schools, shops. Um, you, you can see all these people, all of them have been forced out of their homes as a result um, of the of the flooding. As we paddled on what looked like a mini lake voter, we saw women and children marooned on rooftops and any safe place they could find. A woman who has just been rescued together with a four-year-old son, Ryan, says he spent the night at a friend's residence. Why? Uh -huh. uh, why? Okay. Well, you can hear her speaking to a loved one who's equally concerned about the situation. She's updating the loved one that um, they're on their way. They've been rescued by um, the military. Also rescued is the senior pastor of the Convenance Family Solution Ground, Reverend Winfred Kwame and his friend Joseph Koju Achiku, also known as Doctor. The pastor saved his friend who was nearly swept away by floods. I lost my car, you know, yeah, it was submerged. And uh, if I had a lot, if I, all personal effects are all gone, uh, everything, talk, talk about it, everything. Uh, the, the caring took him. So I had, to, I had to try to save him out. And I got hurt, you know, in the process. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> The sun sets and it begins to get darker. Reality starts to dawn on the affected persons. Here at the Tetegu Junction, many of them carry what they managed to salvage to the residences of loved ones, family members and relatives where they will spend the night. This man who only wants to be known as Bride says his sister will spend the night at his home. 
I'm going to my place. I, go, I just went to the school, my sister and the, the children. So because the waterway there, there is too much. It's not small waterway there. You go, they, they reach here. So that's why I went there. So we're about to go to my place now. Another man who wants to remain anonymous says has been compelled to sleep in a nearby hotel. His mattress and home appliances have all been swept away by the flood water. It is very bad. It is very, very bad. It's very bad. Actually, I came here three years ago, but this is not how things I mean, used to be. But this one there is very bad. Some of the residents were away at work when the flood got worse. They have returned and are now stranded. So these are personnel from the uh, Marine Police who are here um, on the ground um, with the boats to rescue uh, more people here. But we see a lot of activity here today um, with a lot of residents, scores of them, moving to um, safe ground where they tell me they'll be spending um, the night. Many of them have had their rooms flooded. Here, I've met the Greater Accra Regional Fire Commander DCFO Alaji Nuhu. He's here with the Deputy Director of Operations DO1 Joseph Fawson. They are helping throughout the night to bring relief to the people. As far as the emergency situation is concerned, we have been on alert, red alert already. And so, since morning, we have, as a service, we have responded to uh, places about more than three. And all those places we effected, we rescued people from there, three different places in the area. Uh, talk about uh, Teteku, we also right. went to White Cross, we also went to Tampa Valley and other places to do rescue as a service. And then apart from that, we are collaborating with other agencies that are at the grounds to effect other rescue of okay. personnel and people and then their uh, okay. uh, effects. Many of the communities are now without power for close to 24 hours as electricity supply to the affected areas has been cut. Reporting for Joy News, Maxwell Ababa. So in another side of the uh, places w that were affected, Ashalaja, some of the residents are asking government to come to their aid as soon as possible. Michael Ashley was there and reports. Now, still in Ashalaja, a good number of the affected persons uh, had to spend the night outside of their homes and some had to pass the night in kiosk outside of their homes. Some of them spoke to Joy News. So this is the level of the water after the third day of flooding, uh, you know, in, in this place. If you can see beyond me, if you can't, then I'll have to try and describe for you. Now, I can see about a kilometer plus beyond me. And from where I am, I can still see flood waters up until that point. I'm being told by a resident here that the distance between this place and the river could be more than three kilometers. Yet, it has been able to overflow its banks onto this place. And for three days the water even though it has receded is close to my knee it tells you uh, that the first second day of the flooding was really a difficult period for people who live here now um i would be one of the uh, residents of this area let me try and gauge the mood uh, you know of uh, the community the day it happened chief at saying Hanauti. 
Oh, Bina, a senior, a dear maker. Now, so I may add, maybe do the same media. You must say, I record down Kakra. Nanad mobile, no, what card would one be called him for? Oh, oh, by no more castle, no more quabba. Ain't he, oh, hi, Coquamiano, almost all called a Saraja Kuruma, Bomber Sam Baby. And a pena, we know by the Kinky, Bakuni, in Tinam, Bakua, could he bring? I say, almost our cover. Vitanopania, you say, and she had Oh, me, I Utmi Fabibi. But you say, Oh, my dear Fabibi, I'm raising my baby for baby, the view also. And you're not going to be a for baby, the affo, baby, so the view also. So, um, what is basically saying is that, uh, you know, that day when the incident happened, you, you'd you cannot behold the number of people who are carrying their belongings, including mattresses, out of this place. It looked as though there was a war in this place and people were fleeing from the war. Um, he tells me that uh, uh, now he and his family have moved from this place and they are lodging in his wife's container, uh, which is a store close to the roadside. He says that the NADMO were here today to... Uh, give some food to the people who were affected but when they came for them and said they were going to give them a place of shelter they said they were going to return that's not more officials they uh, have not returned till today um they don't know when they will but he expects that the only receipt depending on where you are maybe in a way, and he and his family can have access to their home again i'm surprised okay. at the moment because we have never experienced such before it does come every year but then it doesn't exceed where we are mm. yes but then as at saturday sunday and today today it's even better because yesterday when nadmo came to rescue us they had to park their car over here and then mm. for us to come and join okay. yeah. right now my books are my certificates they are all soaked in the water because we hanged it up there but i don't know how it fell in the water and then yes my my daughter's uniforms her school bags her books they are all swimming in the water yes so what we had to do is just to lock the door so that it wouldn't bring the our belongings outside yes so it would just be swimming Yes, so we'd wait so it subsides and then we go to see what we have left in the house. She doesn't know what's going on. This evening she asked her to go home. Okay. She said we should go home. Okay. <laughs> Where are you sleeping for now? Right now, uh, luckily enough, I have a friend who is married to a landlord. So they gave us one of their rooms. Yes. But yesterday when Nadmo came to rescue us, they asked us to wait for them at the government school and then we didn't hear from them. So this morning I went to buy soup and then I met one of the officials and then I approached I approached him and he said we should come back to the school premises this evening. Mm. Yes. So uh, Chief, you are close to I mean I've seen the water just here. Okay. Um tell me what you saw. Okay, so what happened is that uh I think uh that was Saturday yeah, uh, we woke up the following day, Sunday in the morning, and we saw the place was flooded. Because actually, the Saturday it just drizzled. There were some slight showers, but there wasn't a downpour. So we heard that the waters along the rivers, they are, we learned there was a dam ahead that had been opened, and that was what was causing the uh, the flood. I have been here just for a month, okay. and this is my first time I've seen such waters. Mm -hmm. But uh, for this past uh, three days, it has been very challenging because currently they've taken off the lights. Mm -hmm. We don't have any lights, as you can see. The place is dark mm -hmm. uh -huh, because they said uh, because of the sockets, it can electrocute people. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also here, the nature of the environment, there's nothing to do. You can't. There's no work around here, and it's it's, 
it's a it's a new site that's what i've been told it's a new site so there's nothing here just i think it's yet developing so that's been very challenging yeah it was very pathetic because uh this is a, 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 a residential area. We had adults, we had children, and we had uh, even newly born babies. Yeah, so seeing women struggling inside the water, carrying their belongings without hope, because uh, what happened is that you cannot live thinking something like such can happen to you. So you don't have any plan B anywhere, right? So coming up, they were hopeless. They didn't have any plans ahead. And it was something that was sudden, so it was very, very bad. It was very bad seeing the uh, people losing their place uh, of uh, shelter and going to sleep at a place where it's just, uh, uh, let's say, just it wasn't a place for shelter. But it, it was very sad. Yes, it's such a pathetic situation here uh, in this community. If you are saying a word of prayer. Kindly say one for the resident in this community. Let's just stay in the Ashalaja community because residents uh, there are asking government to come to their aid as soon as possible. Michael Ashale was there during the day and reports. Flooded homes in Ashalaja, a community in the Gasout municipality. Water from the Densu River entered homes after overflowing its banks. Many residents have now abandoned their homes. Three days today is very hard for us, even to leave your children in the home to go out and do your market. You can't go to do anything. Rita Sika is one of many displays. Last night there we went to the Abain school and sleep. Some of them sleep there, and some of us we have some friends and others, and we went there yesterday. Um, so your children are not going to school? No, even today my boy didn't go to school because of the water. Life as she knows it has changed. This one there, you can't do anything, even going to the market, you can't do anything. With nowhere to go and her belongings lost, she's only roaming the community. Her son, Gideon, couldn't go to school. His uniform and books are back in their home, which is now flooded. It has affected me to not go to school, and my learning too is not going well for me. At the night, my mother was having a friend, went to sleep at the house. I miss learning so that I can become a good boy in the future. The only road connecting the communities around Ashalaja to Kasua has also caved in. With only a small portion of the road left, residents bent on crossing it had to be guided. owners of vehicles had to return because it was impossible to cross. Imano Ote, a resident of Obeyeye, recounts the difficulty of crossing the submerged road on foot. <laughs> this is very bad. It's very, very bad. Yesterday I couldn't bring my car home. So um, the boys were here yesterday directing the affair how and we should move in and out so a lot of people have packed their cars they couldn't go home with the car so i have information this morning that i cannot use the car so i have to pack my car yesterday i was very afraid though because i have not experienced it before with the car uh, the first time when the bridge collapsed uh, i was not having a car so we managed through with the boat but this time as i was driving i have not drive through water like this before so yesterday i was very very afraid but i have to gather some courage and pass through yesterday assemblyman for the area wisdom avonio says they had to use boats to rescue stranded residents but finding a boat was a hectic job in fact for the homes we are over 500 and the individuals are over 2000 because right now we have this situation pending at Kwamianu, a place called uh, Mamines Junction. This situation is there. We have it pending here, which is um, this place, we call it Assemblies of God Down. Then we have the same situation again, pending at 3rd October Down. So you see that Ashalaja is a place that is being bounded by this river Densu. So all the banks along the Densu where we have these communities and structures, they are all affected. Because we need a canoe and Nadmo didn't have any to supply us. 
So we have to follow the individuals and then the locals and see how best. So we were planning to go to Afuama, which is a fishing community. But luckily enough, we had a neighbor who was fishing and we called to him for assistance. But unfortunately, to be frank, the whole place is being invaded, it's being encroached by these sound winning activities. And any time that you get there to go and raise them to, they are all, all armed. And they come there in the night. So we find it very difficult. So if the government can come in with a strong team, I think it's going to do a massive work. Because when you look at the stretch from Ashalaja, Mahi, Afuama going, all has been encroached upon. We need the assistance of the government strictly. Affected residents want authorities to come to their aid. For Joy News, Michael Ashale. Let's cross over now to my colleague who has been covering this disaster since yesterday. Maxwell, we are told, is currently at Tetegu. Maxwell, uh, uh, what's the prevailing situation at Tetegu where you are? Well, uh, Brace, it doesn't look like um, the water is subsiding anytime soon. Mm. We had indication from the National Disaster Management Organization um, that they are opening some channels that connect to the ocean um, just a, a very long distance away from where we are standing. And you understand that usually in situations like this, um, that is what they do to ameliorate um, the situation. So yesterday, um, NADMO and other security agencies um, were in action. They went to that channel to desilt it, to dredge it, to enable um, this water, to get easy access to the um, ocean. But it appears that it's not subsiding anytime soon because what we are seeing here is just what we saw um, yesterday. This is the Tetegu Community Clinic, and this clinic was flooded yesterday. And as you can see, it is still um, flooded. Even as I walk through um, this water, in fact, you can see. <clears throat> so I'm actually in the boots. I'm actually in the boots, but you can see um, part of my body you know, submerged in this water. We want to get access. We want to get access to the Tetegu Community Clinic. In fact, there's a big drainage system here and we've been told to be careful to keep in the middle, you know, um, in the middle line so we get access to it. But there's a drainage system here. We're going to be very careful. We want to take you inside the Tetegu Community Clinic just so you see the stench of damage and the devastation caused um, after the spillway of the um, Wager Dam was opened. We are told um, that the Wager Dam operates at a maximum, uh, at a maximum um, capacity of 48 feet. And we are told that at 46 feet, they would have to open some of the spillway. And currently, we are told that um, the, the, the water level is now at 49.5 uh, feet. If the spillway is not opened, it will damage the dam, it will break the dam, and the consequences will be very serious. So now they have to open the spillway, but this is what is happening. And it has actually caused some sort of gridlock also on the main castle wager road. So for persons who are crowd bound, you know, um, th there's heavy gridlock on the Accra bound section of the um, Accra Kaswa um, Highway. A lot of vehicles are in traffic, but we've seen a lot of police personnel on the ground also helping um, to, um, you know, um, mitigate the situation. Let's come inside the Tetegu Community Clinic. Let's find out. Hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, what's your name? I'm Godwin. Godwin. Okay, what, what do you do here? I'm the administrator of the facility. Oh, administrator. And then what's your name? I'm Eric. Eric. Um, the the records Eric Blay. Oh, okay. Tell us, uh, is this the first time you've seen something like this here? This is the first time. Okay. Yes. So um, this facility has been here for some time now, and we have never experienced anything like this. Mm. Normally, when rain falls, you get the gutters choked and all that. But water coming into the facility, this is the first time. We've never seen anything like this. We've never seen. Coming in, it gets your knee. So, yeah, to the yeah. knee level. So it's really, very, 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 very sad mm. and all that. So yeah. the cases all here had to be refed. Immediately we saw the water coming in yesterday. They referred the cases to um, Akawi and the we other facilities. The yeah. So currently there's no one in the facility. Okay. Yes. When, when do you envisage that you're going to reopen this facility? For now, we, we don't, don't know. know. For now, we don't know. We can't yeah. tell. Because currently, it says the, according to what people have been saying, they said they've not even opened the whole thing. So mm. They said the, the dump hasn't been opened. Yeah. To do, yeah. So we are expecting the water to go up and higher than this. So. Okay. I think October, yeah, we are going to operate yeah. as it seems right now. October. But, but, but I want to believe that um, when you saw the water level rising, you managed to 
pack your records and yes, you keep yes, them. Yes. So. The files and all we've take if we've moved all the things to higher levels and all that because initially when it started it was on Monday from yeah. it started from down. Yeah. Yeah. So we just noticed yeah. that the gata has started going up. Yeah. From there we were telling the old oh, this is how it has been on. Yeah. We never knew to get to this place. Yeah. We never knew. So we just yesterday then it got to this level. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. it's kept on going now. You can see all the floor, yeah. the water start coming it's, in. It's, it's wet. Yeah, it's coming into the facility. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what, final words, what, what would you want to tell you know, those in charge? What yeah, kind so of assistance? We, uh, we hope next time they tell us earlier before they mm -hmm. open the dam so that we get prepared for, if anything, we will get prepared and then move our things fast. Because so many people are locked inside yeah. and they, they, they are stranded, they don't know what to do. So we need help. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, Brace, this is the situation here at the um, Tetegu Community Clinic, which is flooded. All cases here are now being referred to um, another health facility, which is on a dry land. But you can see, um, you can see this pet here, this dog uh, here. And even as we move around, the residents keep telling us that this is just a tip of the iceberg. They tell us that. This is just a tip of the iceberg, and we need to go deeper to see the extent of devastation, to see the extent of uh, the water level. You can see more people, more people are moving from their homes. And this is what has been happening throughout um, the night, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., when we were here, we saw pickups um, moving, people parking um, via their possessions, and then um, leaving their homes, fleeing their homes. All the people who live in this community did not sleep in the comfort of their beds um, last night. Many of them around 1 a.m. when um, we were at the Tetegu bus stop. So you can see the water level now. I am more than five feet tall, but you can see it is now above a knee level. You can't even see the boots that I'm wearing. That is the situation here. And we still have to be very careful because um, there's a big drainage system here, so we need to keep up here in the middle. Hi, mommy. Can I talk to you briefly? Hi. Um, What's your name? My name is Patricia. Yeah, I see your daughter. Where, where, where do you live? I live down there. Where are you going right now? I'm going to Dansuma. Dansuma, what are you going to do there? That's why I'm going to live at the moment, because my house is flooded. I mean, flooded. Yeah, you should have been there and see how the place is. I'm, yeah. I mean, I went here last night, wasn't it? And then I came to see if everything, maybe something has, you know, improved. But when I came, you know, it's even worse. Yeah. So I have to, I have to go and, you know, merge in my mom's house and then, yeah. Did you, did you manage to salvage anything? No, no. All my, all my goose is, I mean, all my goose is poor. Goods. You talk about goods. I mean, so my, what? my household, everything is full. Everything is full. You, sh you should have. You should have come there and see yourself. Yeah, it's, yeah. We'll, we'll be. We'll be going there. Yesterday we had the help of the. Yeah. Um, my, 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 uh, there's. It's written Kingdom Kingdom Supermarket in front of my yeah. house. Okay, with so a you, with so a, you own a supermarket there. Yeah. And everything has been destroyed. Everything has okay. been destroyed. So, yeah, yeah. what can we do? Yeah, right. I mean, it, it looks like there's something they should have prevented. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't do it, so I don't like know. Enough warning, then enough you can pack warning, some of your items. Yeah, enough warning, yeah. Because, yeah. How, I mean, how could this be happening like this? I mean, I don't know. I don't leave, I just moved to Ghana. Honestly, I just moved to Ghana like a year ago, but yeah. this doesn't look promising. It doesn't look promising. I'm so sorry for this. Um, once you have life, you know, things will get better, yeah. definitely. We can always start. Yeah, that's what I was So, so sorry. Thank you very much. Thanks for speaking to us also. Okay, yeah. hello to your daughter. Hi. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this is what we're talking about. And she's just one out of the many people who have lost um, the entire livelihood, uh, gone down the drain. Yes, um, you can see more cars more people some of them were trapped in their homes so yesterday they couldn't move out now that is getting clearer so look at them many of them in this track uh, is it nadmo okay uh, you rescued them from where from inside 
Look at children, women and children. This one is not rescue. It's not, it's not, what's it? Help. Help, okay. He says it's not rescue. He says it's help. They have been helped by NADMO um, to get to a higher ground. <laughs> so you can see women and children, men, all of them being assisted by NADMO, taking them to a dry land. You're told that a lot of people are still trapped in their room. So yesterday um, in the evening, um, we had all the secure, security agencies, the Ghana National Fire Service, um, the Marine Police, the Marine, the Marine uh, um, Police. We also had um, personnel from the 48th Engineer Regiment. All of them um, were on the ground assisting with, um, you know, rescues. But it looks like they've not been able to cover um, a larger ground because we hear that a lot more people are trapped in their homes. Many of them who live in story buildings have the option of going up there. So today, NADMO is continuing with the um, rescue efforts here. I've seen some personnel from the military also um, on the ground. So Brace, this is what is happening here. We still have more people, more people coming from the other side. We will be going there. It's very difficult. Many of the areas inaccessible as I speak to you, but we'll try as much as possible um, you know, to, to go there and then get access. Hi. What's your name? Uh, uh, where, where, um, where do you live? Oh, I live at Kaswa, but I have a land that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Tetegu. Okay, so where are you going right now? Now, I, I have uh, some items okay. at my house. Mm. And yesterday, I heard some news that... Uh, the water so you're going to check on those items? Yes, I'm going to check and then... Okay. Okay. Find out what is the, if the materials have been destroyed okay. or... Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Brace, we have more people moving um, this direction. Many of them also trying to get to the dry land. We'll be going... It's, it's very difficult assessing some of the areas. Very, very difficult. Yesterday, we're in good company. Um, the 48th Engineer Regiment um, we in good company yesterday. Skilled swimmers, expert swimmers who took us to some of the inaccessible um, areas. Right now, it'll be difficult to get there with our vehicle, but we'll still try just to bring you um, the story and tell you how, you know, um, things are panning out here this morning. Over to you in the studio, Brace. All right, Maxwell, thank you so much uh, for that coverage. So that's Maxwell in Tetegu, one of the affected areas uh, uh, from this flooding. Uh, meanwhile, Director of Public Relations at the Ghana Water Company, Stanley Marte, has uh, expressed worry at the increase in residential development in the wager area in spite of the risk involved in living at the catchment areas prone to flood upon the spillage of the wager dam. Speaking on the AM show, Stanley Marte says that district assembly should ensure that residential development in the area is stopped since the spillage exercise is bound to continue to ensure the safety of the dam. Spilling since April, we haven't stopped spilling. Uh, we are spilling, we've been opening the, uh, the two gates depending on uh, the levels of, of, of the water, okay? And then uh, when we had the uh, rain uh, last, uh, last week, okay, the, the, thing, the level just shot up, okay? It just shot up from 47 feet straight to 49.5. And how could we say that we wouldn't open the uh, rest of the gate? Okay, even if, you know, currently we have opened four, one is not open. The water is even going above the two gate that is, is not open. So assuming that we close all the gates, the water will still spill over the gate. So then, what is the other uh, thing? So we jump back to square one. And it's important that we store the excess water so that we save the dam. Okay? My only worry, or my main worry, is the number of buildings that continuously are springing up in that area. And every year, we spill the water, and every time the uh, thing, the buildings that uh, the, the buildings uh, uh, keep springing up. You see the buildings that we are seeing on the screen now. Some of them are uncompleted. Let us wait till next year. You see that they will complete them. Although they are submerged now, they will the thing, uh, 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 the thing complete those buildings. So then, uh, whose whose work is it? Is it the people constructing or the district assembly? I think the district assembly or the municipal assembly must be asked to be again. All right. Because if they, if they are able to stop the people from building in the course of the river 
and stop them from building the buffer zone. We're going to have uh, the course of the river uh, such that it will go directly to the sea and there wouldn't be any harbor. But if people are building at unauthorized places and we sit down and lose, then we are going to face these challenges on the We will be taking you back to Michael uh, Maxwell Agbagba for latest on this uh, flooding. Stay with us for comprehensive coverage of that. In the meantime, let's do some stories on uh, Galamse and uh, Asantehene Otunfo said to the second last week, speaking at the um, uh, to the minds of many as he lamented the lack of radical action against illegal mining or Galamse. The Akufuado administration has over the last few weeks come under heavy criticism for its inability to keep the menace which is wreaking havoc uh, on uh, farmland and water bodies in the country. In some areas farmers have no option than to depend on rainwater for irrigation as rivers are polluted. The Agric Ministry has also sounded a caution that Ghana's cocoa could be banned on the international market because they contain traces of harmful chemicals used in the illegal mining business. Oh, this morning, uh, well, this morning, President Kufuado is expected to hold a special meeting with the National House of Chiefs on Galamse Adamantia Palace. Join us will bring you an update of that. Meanwhile, the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the Peace Council, Reverend Father Anthony Frag. Frank Tana says fighting the menace will be a mirage if all concerned agencies and the public fail to play their meaningful roles. Well, Joy News has embarked on a campaign to highlight the need to fight the Galamse menace. You can also join the fight by making your voices heard with the hashtag no to Galamse. The hashtag again is no to Galamse. You come to Galamse. So that is an albatross on our head. It's rather unfortunate that it's happened this way. Uh, Ghana was known as the Gold Coast and therefore it was known. But during that time, uh, it wasn't like the Galamse that we are talking about. Uh, many ones people were doing hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It was there. But unfortunately, it's got into a point where people are now <coughs> using equipment that and all that and and doesn't care but they don't care about the environment or anything but the question is who is in control of that security around the area up, 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 from the up. district level to the highest level we are all talking about galamse yeah. the government set up uh, this, uh, the, the, the commission, a military com police to do it why have we not been able to stop it so, so why? There's a point. Why haven't we been able to stop it? If you create a, a system where we say we will stop it, to the extent that the president says, I've put my presidency on the line, and yet it is going on, then to me, something is wrong somewhere. Sure. So we need to review why this is happening. Polluting our waters. And case in point is when I came back and hear that a Chinese woman who had who was supposedly deported is back in this country also doing Galamse again. Who are so, to come? Is it that our borders are porous? Or what? <coughs> so what happened? So, and people know who are doing the Galamse. They know the people are working there in the communities with those people. Unfortunately, unemployment may be the problem. Fine, but that is not to say that we have to destroy environments. So, Unemployment could be a problem. Fine, so people in communities will say, I don't have any job to do, and therefore, but that's not the alternative. So it's something that is facing all of us that we need to find out what, up, 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 what went wrong. But to me, why can't say be stopped? Because I'm sure people are also involved that they know and have some authority somewhere that I, I don't think that should be the case. So, so to such time that security agencies are very serious with that, then it means we are going to just take the face of the soil but not going to deeper to know exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so it's my concern, Your, your Excellency, more, more so your concern. I've spoken about it and uh, we, we feel that it's about time that we all sat down to find out what it is. Because rivers are being polluted and then we don't have a means of trying to uh, 
you know, clean these rivers and all those. So our people who don't have water and everything, Bilhazia, sickness, health, delivery system and everything is all being affected. But uh, it, we need to take it serious. We have to. So, so, and if we can have drones to even check on whatever is happening, uh, uh, we, we would have to to be able to pinpoint what's happening there, who is there. Because at the district level, we have the uh, political administration there. You have the district chief executive, you have the district security council over there. And that district, there's a, there's a galamse going on. And you tell me we don't know who is there? So remember, you can still talk about Galamse with the hashtag no to Galamse. Now, let me take, take you back to Maxwell Agbagba, who is currently at Tetego for latest on that. Maxwell, what's happening now? Well, uh, Brace, this is another location. We just drove about um, about 100, about 100 <laughs> meters ahead of us, and this is what we can see here. So this is the ferocity um, of the water. It's, it's difficult to understand how residents are coping with this. You can see how this water is gushing from the other side. And um, we are told by residents that they've not seen this water subsiding. And this is what it has been like since, um, since uh, uh, um, yesterday when the water level rose to dangerous heights. There are some persons who are on the other side who say they want to talk to us. We're going to go to them, but we have to be extremely careful. So you can see, um, you can see there's electric wires also here. There are huge pylons that have been affected um, by this flood. And as it stands now, Power supply has been cut to this area. That is important, especially um, because you do not want to have these wires, um, this electricity wires, you know, hanging dangerously um, in the water. So power has been cut, power supply to this community has been cut since, um, since yesterday. Throughout the night, residents here had to sleep, um, had to sleep in the dark. And it doesn't look like power will be restored anytime soon because, because the water level in some rooms here is up to the level of their switches. And it will be dangerous for power to be restored now. Um, as it stands now, we are unable to tell when they'll be restoring power. But let's get to this house. Let's speak to some of the residents here. Um, this boy here definitely does not get the enormity of what is happening. So I can see him smiling. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Did you go to school today? No, because of the water. Oh, okay. Wait. Because, because, of, the, because of the water? Yes. Because of the flood? Yes. So when was the last time you were in school? Uh, Monday. Monday? Yes. Monday. Is this the first time you've seen something like this? Yes. 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 This is the first time you've seen something like this? Yes. Wow. Where's your school located? Um, Oblogo. Oblogo. That side is also flooded. Yes. It doesn't look like you're going to go back to school anytime soon. Yes. They have to close it. You, you want them to close the spillways? Yes. Okay. Why do you want them to close it? If they close it to the dam will break and that is dangerous. It would affect the, it would affect the dam. Yes. We are angry. Every day you pass, you pass, you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What do you say is your name again? Toby. What? Toby. Toby. Okay. Great. Let's speak to... Hi. The water level has reached your knees. Make it you know that. Okay. Um, I will first time I won't be here to see you. I won't be grandpa there. It's way there, one one. A man for Finny Nayama, Bebre to her. I say a man for Nyama. It's a strong baby. So I'm betting out to my Maya because you never be called. You never be a call. You're demony Nayama. See a patcher. You won't be that, and then be your first time. You won't be. It's a strap by homeboy. No, you be being fast. I'm found. See a panic of a brain. Okay. Essentially, what she's saying is that um, they, 
want something to be done about this um, flood. She would, she wishes um, that the spill, the spillway will be closed um, so that the water, you know, would subside. Um, she's saying that her children are unable to um, go to school as a result of this flood. She says their rooms um, are flooded. Um, at this point, it is difficult for them to go out. Have you? What you mean? I'm going to say that you're not going to be able to do that. Nabi, oh, say that you're not going to be able to do that. Say that you're not going to be able to do that. Okay. Well, she's appealing for um, food and support uh, because she says that they are unable to go out to go and get food um, at this point because the whole area is flooded. She talks about how her neighbors um, left, have left their homes um, because because of the flood. Many of the rooms we've seen here flooded. You can see up to that end about 200 meters, 300 meters um, away. You can see people wading through the flood water, also moving, you know, um, here. Let's, let's, okay, thank you. Okay, well, she says they don't, they don't have gas um, to, 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 to prepare food. And in fact, when we were coming here, a gas filling station, about 10 minutes drive away from this place, we saw it flooded, everything underwater. This is what we are talking about. And it, it appears, even as you move through, we walk through this water, you can feel the strength of the current. So strong, if you are not careful, you will be carried away. You'll be swept away, I should say. Many of the residents want power restored. Many of them also agree that if power is restored anytime soon, it will wreak havoc on the people here. So you can see, Nadmo, let's talk to you, Nadmo, please. Let's talk to the National Disaster. Let's talk to the National Disaster Management Organization. They're still doing more rescues. Hi. Um, good morning, sir. My brother. We are live, yeah. we are live on Joy News. Yeah. Um, your name, sir? I'm Odro. Odro, you are? Odro from Nadmo Headquarters. Nadmo Headquarters. Okay, so do we have... Uh, please, can you wait briefly so we talk to you briefly? We are live on Joy News. Yeah, we are live on Joy News. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are live on Joy News. So we want to find out. A lot of people are still trapped up yeah. there. What is Nadmo doing about the situation? Yeah, we are the, the men are on the ground to try and bring their men out. Okay. Uh -huh. So we are on the and then the military and then the fire service people are there. Okay. Yes. Where, where are they right now? Oh, they are there. And then some of the the wager, wager the other side. Okay. So. Uh -huh. Are you able to tell the number of people you, you've rescued so far? Oh, uh, more than 300 people now. More than 300. Yeah, when when we are around. Okay. Yes. Today, just today. Yes. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Um, he says they, they've rescued more than 300 people um, so far, and they're still going up there to rescue uh, more. The water level, let's, let's go to the other side and see how this house is flooded. On a normal day, hi, Muko, KB Aka, Aka, Ana. Muko, you can't win. I ain't even for. What's the name for? 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 What's they're going to rest. Can we talk to you briefly? Briefly, briefly. Okay. So that's that's an official of the National Disaster Management Organization. We wanted to speak to him. Um, let's let's show. That's Nadmo, National Disaster Management Organization. Um, they're going to rescue more people. They are in a hurry, actually. But a gentleman I spoke to earlier works with a towing um, company, towing service, and um, he says. There's a, a vehicle some meters away from where we are. 
and they're trying to tow the vehicle back. They cannot assess the area, so they are going back. Hi. Oh, um, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Shaibu. Shaibu, you live around? Yeah, I live around. I just moved out of the area some few months ago. So we'll, we'll say I still live around because I have yeah. majority of my family members here. Okay. Did, did, you, did you know about this or this is the first time you've seen it? No, no, no. I mean, for all my stay here, this should be the first time. For over 20 years I've been around. Okay. And uh, according to information, for those who have been around for long, they've, they've never seen this before. What happened to this car? It wasn't a flat. No, no, it wasn't but you are moving, you're moving away from this place? Yeah, helping you are helping to move them? Yeah, it's helping so you can see evacuate. still more people. And that's um, our assembly member. So where, where is he? Come on. Oh, let me, let me talk to him. Yeah. Assembly member. Yeah. Okay. Hi. All right. um, what's your name? My name is Honorable Bright Kwame Adabra. Assembly member for Titegu Letra area. Okay. Um, you've gone around assessing the you know, situation. How bad is it? This is very bad. It's beyond control. I think the whole entire community has been flooded and it hasn't happened like before. It's very strong and then almost all houses have been affected. Mm. And so, and, and how, many, how many people are affected so far? All the communities affected. It's countless. Over okay. a thousand people are affected. Over a thousand people? A thousand people. Because the whole community, both the new town and the old town has been affected by this damn village. Mm. Well, and is this the first time you've seen something like this? This is the first time we've seen something. Usually when there is a spillage, they used to manage the water flow. But with, today, I think what we are seeing is beyond us. We've never seen it before. It's a surprise to the whole entire community. Wow. And, and you are an assembly member for the Tetegu electoral area. Did you, get, did you get any indication? Did you get any indication from the Ghana Water Company Limited um, that they were going to spill this water? Okay, not more will send information, but as to when you receive the information on time. And then the spillage we know of doesn't come in this form. We know they've managed the water and regulated in such a way that they spill in some inches. Usually we do have up to 16, 18 inches. But today, as I'm talking, it's at 68 inches. Okay. Yeah, 68 inches level. Village. So the whole entire community is flooded and all properties are now okay. in danger. So are you trying to rescue, you're rescue more people? Yes, to currently I'm um, in some cars that we are bringing people out of the community to, to some safe heavens. We have, we have churches, ICGC, Jordan Temple, Christ okay. Apostolic, we have Pentecost also assisting EP Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Yes, assisting as safe heavens for your people. Okay. Okay. Thank you for talking to us. What did you say is the name again? I think we should all encourage the government to come to our aid so that they manage their water spillage. I okay. think someone's negligence at this work, that's mm. what is causing this. Because okay. they should have monitored the flow of the water from the eastern corridors. Yeah. That's what they usually do. Mm. So when the water is coming, they know when, as and when to open for the water to pass through Titigo. Yeah. But this thing is just a surprise to all. And then all areas, are, it has never happened. Usually we see the channels of the drains and then the Dinsu mm. levels up. But yeah. this one, everywhere is like we are all building in the Denzu. Mm. That's what we are. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So you had the electoral, uh, assemblyman for the Tetegu electoral area. You can see road signs have not been spared. That road sign, the first river, first riverside. That's it. It has not been spared. Also completely destroyed. Yeah. That, that, definitely. Definitely. We'll be careful. Very moving scenes there, but uh, we'll, we'll still be there. We'll bring you a comprehensive coverage of what's happening around the wager area. But uh, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll take you to Kumasi, where the president is meeting with uh, chiefs and MMDCEs at Mensha. We'll be there live to bring you the particular uh, address that the president will be given. Stay with us. <laughs> 